You're listening to Satellite Sisters. What's a satellite sister? The person you call when the best thing in your life happens or the worst. The person that gets you up, gets you going, and gets you through. And every once in a while, changes your mind. This podcast is part pep talk, part weekly check-in. Like grabbing coffee with a friend. Thanks for being here. Welcome to the Satellite Sisterhood. You're listening to Satellite Sisters. Thanks so much for being with us today. I'm Leon Dolan in Pasadena, California. I'm the youngest sister. I'm a writer and producer and happy to be here on Valentine's Day with my gal pals. <laughs> have I ever called what? you that? No, no, you never no. Have. please, please don't again. <laughs> okay. No. okay, but our question of the week is, who do you want to send a Valentine to today? Because it is Valentine's Day. Liz? Okay, this is Liz Dolan. I'm in Santa Monica, California. I am a marketer and a podcaster. And I already sent my Valentine, Lee, and I posted it in the Satellite Sisters Facebook group today. There was a hilarious cartoon by Roz Chast. You know how much we love New Yorker cartoonist Roz Chast. She created Valentine's for her very special Valentine. I'm going to read you one of the ones she created. It was a series of three. This one just said, for my darling cup of joe. And there is a picture of a mug of coffee. (laughs) Hot or iced, perked or drip, I was yours from the very first sip. <laughs> oh, yes. Valentine to coffee. Valentine that is, coffee. that's true love right it there. Is, yes. It is. Julie, how about you? What's up? Well, this is Julie Dolan. I'm in Dallas, Texas. I'm a podcaster and I'm also an urban nana, as you know. So, of course, the obvious answer to your question, Leanne, is I sent Valentine's to my five grandchildren. You know, oh, I nice. mean, of course, uh, because they are the loves of my life. Oh, that's very sweet, Julie. Oh, that's that's nice. nice. Not your gal pals? <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't mention my husband either, did I? No. Okay. All right. Well, I feel, like I, I feel like I, we should send a Valentine to Rihanna. I mean, she was up there in the middle of the air doing that no. Super Bowl show. And then we found out she was pregnant. All those things together. Unbelievable. So happy Valentine's Day to you, Rihanna. You did. I guess she says her name, Rihanna. I learned that from Gail King this week. Okay. She says okay. Rihanna, even though everyone says Brianna. But uh, so thank you, Rihanna. Happy Valentine's Day to you. That was amazing, inspiring Good performance. Choice. I think yeah. all of us who've ever been pregnant were like, yes, I couldn't even get off the couch. You, you <laughs> couldn't, L- Leon, you could not have done that. I, when you I was so that. sick. I witnessed my... your pregnancies. No, oh, no way. Gosh. No way, sister. Oh, uh-uh. I'm so sick with my second one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Don't oh, relive that. Moving okay, platform. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. So, but today on the show, we have a lot of good stuff going on. A lot of things happening in our lives this week. We got a little How Was Your Week segment from everybody. Um, a really kind of fascinating text we got from our sister, Monica. She was, Liz, a witness to history, wasn't she? New segment, Leanne, witness to history, starring <laughs> Monica Dolan. We're gonna, You're going to be very surprised what Monica witnessed. You really are. All right, Julie, you're bringing us some parenting trends between the generations. You're, you're right. not trying to shake it up, though, right? No, you're I'm trying. not. We have to come together, people. Okay, <laughs> we have to come together. Generations, stop pitting us against each other. But I'm going to talk about some parenting trends in 2023 that I believe all boomers can embrace. Okay, that's all. Terrific. I'm saying. And then I'm following up the new uh, new. New York Magazine, not the New Yorker, New York Magazine and The Cut uh, published a really fun list of the new rules, sort of social etiquette and other things like that for relationships and the workplace and, uh, you know, family and COVID. And there are over like 200 of them, but I picked out five that I want to discuss. Lots of fun ones, sort of a different way of manners in the modern day. Then we have um, a full complement of entertaining sisters today and a few other special things. So uh, stay with us here. Well, I guess you have to. You're already listening. (laughs) You went to the trouble of downloading the show. Just here we are. It's only been five minutes. Not even. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay, well, I'm going to jump right in here with um, someone who just surprisingly has been very much in the news lately. Who would have thought that it would be Ben Affleck's moment, you know, but I think Ben Affleck, especially since the Grammys, totally having a moment. So I'm just going to call this good Ben, bad Ben. Mm. Um, okay, good Ben. Uh, over the weekend on the Super Bowl, if you watched the Super Bowl broadcast, I got to say, 
Ben Affleck's Dunkin' Donuts commercial was hilarious. Just hilarious. He really laid on that Boston accent. He's from Medford, Mass. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Very funny. Did you guys see it? Did you like it? It was really wonderful. It was one of my favorite ads. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, you know, my favorite part was <laughs> JLo because yeah. she just went right back to Jenny on the block. Like, is this what you do all day when you say you're at work? <laughs> I thought that delivery of that line was so funny. And so yes. I, I, yeah, I love that commercial. I thought it was great. Yeah. And that, that commercial also had, but you know, what we in the marketing business would call a key insight, because when she says, you know, bring me a glazed, it's like, yeah, everybody loved, loves a glazed donut. So you can have these big stars and you can, you know, but the, the real insight about Dunkin' Donuts is delicious donuts. Right. So, so that's what I would say, good Ben. Now, bad Ben, or just what the heck Ben, really, is there was also a trailer for Ben Affleck's new movie, which is called Air. And it's a movie about how Air Jordan came to be. And uh, as it said in the trailer, it's inspired by t- true events. Okay. Inspired by, I think, being the keywords there. Because a number of the Satellite Sisters asked in the Facebook group, like, what did I think? Because as many of you know, I worked at Nike for many years. And um, so the who thought up the big idea of the Air Jordan? Let's just say there are many versions of that <laughs> of that story. You know, it turned out pretty well. And so a lot of people claim that they're the one that thought it up. Uh, So this particular movie goes with the story that a guy named Sonny Vaccaro thought it up. Let's just say that is debatable, debatable. Um, But the movie, Ben Affleck plays Nike founder Phil Knight and Matt Damon plays Sonny Vaccaro. Okay, these are two men I know very, very well. Uh, Phil and Sonny. Phil and yes. Sonny, not Ben and Matt. <laughs> and I would just say, yeah, Phil and Sonny should be so lucky. To- <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just hilarious to see them, those two guys who are, you know, totally not ready for prime time most of the time being being played by Ben and Matt. So when they first announced the um, casting in the movie, it was like last June, I remember seeing that Ben Affleck was going to play Phil Knight and I texted him and said, Phil Knight, you texted Phil Knight, Knight, not Ben. Okay. I do not know Ben Affleck. No. Okay. No, I texted Phil Knight. I was like, Ben Affleck playing you seriously. And he, he did respond and he's like, who knows what the movie will say, but quote, but with Affleck playing me, it's worth it. (laughs) And It must be a little bit like Mark Zuckerberg watching The Social Network, you know. I mean, he always said he didn't watch it, but I'm sure he did. And it must be weird to watch someone play you in a movie, especially what is clearly a highly fictionalized version of of the true story. So a lot of people, again, in the Facebook group thought this might be a movie that comes from Phil's memoir, Shoe Dog. Phil Knight wrote a a best-selling memoir. We even had Phil Knight on Satellite Sisters, right? When Dog came out, we interviewed Phil Knight about that book. But this is not that movie. That movie is being made by Netflix and it's being made by Frank, producer Frank Marshall, who has produced many huge, huge movies. Phil Knight and Frank Marshall originally met, believe it or not, on the set of Back to the Future because Nike made all the futuristic shoes for that movie. So they met on the set of Back to the Future and they've been friends ever since. And it's Frank Marshall, who is going to make the movie from Shoe Dog. So just wanted to clear that up. So anyway, Ben, I don't know, Ben (laughs) Ben Affleck having a moment. And the trailer makes it look like it's sort of a buddy cop thing. Right. Uh Uh (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Again, I will just characterize the relationship they had. Not quite like that, but it's okay. (laughs) It's okay. It's a movie. It's a movie. You're going to, you're going to go see it. No doubt, Liz. Yes. I, I, I guess I will. I don't know. Oh yeah. Come on. Yeah, Let's come on, be Liz. first in We're line. Going. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Let's be okay. first in line. I guess this. I will. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, speaking of good Ben, bad Ben, can we talk about big Ben? Because 
Whoa. Whoa. Well, how about that segue? Wow. Segue. Okay. <laughs> I, my, how was your week is, um, I went to a birthday party this weekend, but it happened to be in London. Okay. Ooh. How about that? Wow. I know, Leon, I don't even think I mentioned it to you. You were a no. little shocked uh, at our production call on Monday that I had actually been to London and back. But this was for um, a very good friend that my husband and I have known for many years. We met, we met Alexander when he was uh, when we were in Moscow, and he invited us to his 60th birthday party. And uh, you know, you know, part of my theme this year is to relax and enjoy, and we just felt like we should go celebrate this. We had the opportunity. We had the miles. We, we were we were there. That's what we decided to do. And Alexander is a very interesting person. He grew up in Georgia, not the state of Georgia, but the country of Georgia. And he grew up under the Soviet system. Um, and that he learned a lot of English initially from rock and roll, which um, I always <laughs> find so interesting. <laughs> yeah. Had a lot of people that lived in the Soviet Union that's, you know, uh, that's who, you know, th how they learned it. He loves Frank Zappa. He's a giant <laughs> Frank Zappa fan. He knows everything about that. But he is part of the first generation of entrepreneurs to bring sort of Western business, you know, styles and capital capitalistic practices to Russia. And but he decided that he really wanted to celebrate his birthday with his friends. And as you can imagine, he has very diverse friends from all sorts of countries all over the world. Um, but he felt it was, you know, at his birthday party, um, which was an absolutely lovely event and, you know, a wonderful dinner and there were toasts. And of course, there was a big dance band because he likes to dance. And so he and his wife, Marina, we, we had a lot of fun doing that. But he made at the beginning a very nice toast, thanking everyone for coming to his party because he said that, you know, people have endured so much recently, both with the pandemic and he, of course, is feeling just, you know, uh, just so opposed to uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine and that he was, you know, one of the people in the world that was actually trying to build ties with Russia to make it, you know, sort of join more of the Western approach to life and that, he, you know, all of that is over now. So he he felt like it was even more important to to step back and to really, you know, be thankful for his birthday and for his friends. And it was a great party. And it just made me think that throwing your own party is a really good idea. Do you, <laughs> don't, don't you agree? And, and Leon, I, you know, I was thinking of you now. Yeah. You're the youngest uh, of the sisters. And of course you are so much younger than all of us, as <laughs> you tell us all the time. You, you and, are you Gen know, X. We are in, boomers. In the future, you have a big birthday coming up. Do you think that this would, I, I think you should start now to plan to throw a really um, wonderful birthday for yourself and your friends. What do you think? I would totally do that for 60. Yes. I yeah. mean, it's a couple of years off, uh, but um, but I, I, I would do that for a variety of reasons. So yes, I, I'm, I'm interested in this. I'm interested in your thoughts on, on this. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, this is, I think, you know, it's a great idea. I did a little research, I don't know, checked with Miss Manners, Emily Post, and another website called etiquettehell.com. And, <laughs> and all three of the, these apparent etiquette um, sites, they said it's really rude to throw your own birthday party because you are it, the party is focused on you rather than on your guests. Now, I, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not asking people to like come to my birthday, a potluck and give me gifts. I, right. you know, I think, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm not sure that's so great, yes. but I think like if you are hosting your own party and you are like hosting your guests in a very special way, I, I just think we're at a point in our lives and in the time in our lives that having those kind of celebrations are really important. What do you think, Liz? Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. It's It seemed the way you describe it, it's just such a nice way to say thank you and I love you to all of your friends and family. And I think we we think about that differently now than we did in the before times, you know? And so, yeah, I it is a lot of work throwing the party though. But Leanne, I know you would enjoy throwing your own party. 
<laughs> yeah, so I mean, yes. just the way you wanted it, sister. Right. I mean, right. I mean, I'm were- not. Yes, I wouldn't do it because I'm a control freak. I just, as Liz said, I think it would be a nice celebration. And I, I always get. I am not a big birthday person, as you know. Yeah. I always get super self conscious when people throw things for me or host mm-hmm. me for dinner, like for my birthday. I mean, I have a group of friends. We do a birthday you know, dinner thing. And it's good. It's a small group, but one's enough. Like I don't need multiple parties. I don't need many things. I don't really Mm. love a lot of gifts. I'm I'm just not a big birthday person. So, but 60, I feel like, okay, fine. Well, also Mark for me, five years of cancer free. -free. So So for me, it's a sort of a double, it's a real celebration. So that's, it it is. Leanna, it just dawned on me that your birthday is this week. It is this week. Cause you (laughs) see, I didn't even, I'm (laughs) I didn't even remember that. Now I'm looking okay. at the date. Yeah. Okay. You're a February okay. girl. <laughs> okay. That's right. I, I think I got something in the mail to you, but I do. This was a, a, just a lovely, lovely party. It was so meaningful. And, you know, I, I, we felt very honored to be there. And so I, in this one case, I just have to totally disagree right. with Ms. Manners, Emily Post, and whoever is behind etiquettehell.com because <laughs> I think, I think they're wrong on this. Yes. Uh, I think yeah. we need to modernize the rules about this. I'm with you, Julie. Yes. All right. Well, we're talking about the new rules later, some more modern manners. So, you, you, and it's a good spot for you, Julie. You can say whatever you want, voice your opinion on many new rules. So, oh, good. Uh, good. that's good. Well, this week I had a fun business meeting with our niece, Fiona Dolan. So, so Fiona has been on the show. You know, I have a long relationship with Fiona. She's 23 now, living in New York. Um, she is uh, she's transitioning from one side of marketing and advertising to another. So she she has some free time. She has some availability to do some freelance marketing for me, and I am in need of that because in August or in April, just a couple months, the paperback version of Lost and Found in Paris is coming out. Oh, so, exciting! Yes, it is exciting. April 18th. So. Hello, book clubs. Uh, if you're looking for a book for 2023, the paperback comes out then. Um, you know, you normally with publishers, they don't do a ton of marketing for your paperback unless you've had like, unless you've been a giant bestseller for like 20 years and then they, then they'll spend some money, but usually they do something a little light marketing. <laughs> But my publisher this year has been on strike for the last couple of months. It's been a tough business position for everybody involved. It looks like they've come to an agreement there at HarperCollins, which is great. But we basically got the notice that the authors that have books coming out this spring, you're sort of on your own because right now we don't have people to do anything and nothing's in the pipeline. Okie doke, fine you know, call Fiona Dolan. And so (laughs) Fiona read Lost and Found in Paris over Christmas. And she texted me like, oh my gosh, I love this. This is so fun. I couldn't put it down. And then she told me, she said, you should be on TikTok, you know, because it's right now it's really trendy for people my age to read actual books. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Okay, mark that down. Talk about a marketing insight, Liz. (laughs) Yeah. Boom. That went on. I was like, (laughs) okay, well, stay tuned. So I set up a call with Fiona. Hey, I would like you to handle... I'm not on TikTok and I don't really want to be uh, mainly because of national security issues, but sure. Okay. If it's going to help me launch this paperback, I'll compromise my standards and um, good work. So, uh, so we set a time and we did some pre meeting emailing. I sent her a whole, here's, here's the stuff you have to prep. Here's what I've got. Here's everything you need to know about the book. Here's, you know, all my social media accounts. She sent me some, I, you know, some pre meeting things like here's some authors you should check out. I mean, Fiona is a businesswoman, Liz. She's mm-hmm. and Julie, you know, she's been in charge of her own life since she was like five years old, right? Yes. She has yes. just been yes. on it. She, yeah. she, first of all, right on time, Dolan, Dolan standard time, 10 a.m. Boom. There she is on the Zoom. Okay. She had a list of 30 ideas, which we could launch right away on TikTok. She knows how to share a screen. She shared the screen. We discussed it. We had some frank conversations like, am I too old to be on TikTok was one of the okay. questions. That's good. 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 And she said, I don't think so. I mean, I think you have a good energy. So that's nice. Fiona to say. She doesn't think so. 
Uh, we, we discussed, you know, okay, let's do a calendar. Let's do this. Let's set up Google docs. Okay. We'll exchange information. I, this is a paid gig. So I was like, here's the fee. Let me know if you think that's enough. It's for 12 weeks. And then we can talk about a fee after that. And then she said the words, Liz, okay, well, I'm going to do a consult on this. Ooh. Because she oh. has, of course, she has a friend who has her own social media company. And mm-hmm. of course, it's her friend, Sam from high school, who we know. So <laughs> yes. Oh, we know Sam. <laughs> so she's going to do a consult with Sam. <laughs> and I said, I'm not paying for that. I don't have money to consult with Sam. She, she's like, that's okay. I'll do it on my own. And then you know what she said as we approached the end of our meeting? She said, okay, so let's discuss next steps. Oh, I love that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wow. So professional. It was so professional up until the very moment she happened to be home visiting her parents in Bend, Oregon, when she said, you know, my mom and dad are just sitting over there at the dining room table, listening to everything we say. (laughs) (laughs) But I feel good that Fiona is on board. So, you know, watch this space because soon I will be announcing TikTok, my TikTok account for those of you she's going to be in charge of it. She's going to do a little Instagram work for me. We're, I just said, let's have some fun. Let's just have some fun, fun. With, see what we can do. And I'm so happy to have her help. And she's so smart and professional. I feel like we've all done a good job. Her parents, yes. especially. Yes. But that's, she's, that's good. She's awesome. We can have some auntie pride in her. <laughs> yes, we can. Yes, uh-huh. we can. All right. Stay with us. We're the Satellite Sisters. Liz, I understand you had a complete butcher box weekend this weekend. Explain what happened to the Satellite Sisterhood. Butcher box bonanza, Lee. And I don't know, Friday afternoon, feeling ambitious, realized I had a frozen boneless leg of lamb in my freezer from butcher box that I ordered before the holidays. And I was just in the mood to do it. So I defrosted it. Saturday, I cooked it following the complete instructions from the butcher box chef on the butcher box YouTube channel. I did exactly what he told me. It was delicious for dinner Saturday. Sunday, what did I have? Lamb sandwiches for the Super Bowl, Leon. Unbelievable. Bonanza. Butcher box bonanza. <laughs> That's the thing. It's just super convenient to have all that high quality beef, seafood, chicken, lamb right in your freezer. It just makes meal planning so easy. Like, yeah. you know, you have something great in your freezer all the time. It's why we love ButcherBox. You can enjoy a range of high quality cuts that may be hard to come by at the grocery store at an amazing value. You get these great member deals so you can save big on your favorite cups. You get those recipe inspirations. You go to the YouTube, yes. you go to the website, you're getting guides, tips, hacks, Liz. You're going to get some hacks over there at ButcherBox. <laughs> you're in so you- ButcherBox's world and I enjoyed it. <laughs> I know. It's great. I I absolutely love my subscription. I've had it for four years now. I I always am happy when the box comes and I'm always happy knowing that there's dinner in the freezer. So thank you, ButcherBox. If you want in on this kind of ButcherBox world that we're describing, (laughs) we have a great offer for our listeners this week. I think it's their best deal yet. 100% grass-fed chuck roast and a whole organic chicken free when you join, plus an additional $20 off your first box. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash sisters and use code sisters to get a 100% grass-fed chuck roast and a whole chicken free in your first box, plus $20 off your box. That's butcherbox.com slash sisters and use code sisters to get this special deal. Thanks, ButcherBox. Most of you satellite sisters and misters have heard us singing the praises of pros. It's the world's most personalized hair care. Switching to a custom routine from pros was one of the best things I've done for my hair. And the results I'm seeing just keep getting better. Liz, I have to say, I feel like pros has turned and revitalized my hair game. I mean, it's wow. just... Wow. I. I'm impressed that I, you have a hair game. I think that's what you need pros for. If you if you don't have a hair game, just get take the pros quiz and you're going to get a game. 
<laughs> well, I do. I do think it was one of my best features. I'll say it. You know, I have short legs. I there's a million things that I look at and go, not yeah. the best, but I, I did get some good hair. But yes, it was starting to not look great. So I have uh-huh. to admit, I was starting to just be a little frustrated by where's the shine, where's the smoothness, mm-hmm. where's the body, and yeah. it was gone. So I recommitted to pros. I'm fully pros you know, infiltrated, like I'm taking the hair vitamins, I'm doing the preconditioner, I'm using the shampoo, I'm using the conditioner. It's so dry here. And I am a swimmer. So I have leave in conditioner as well. I I'm just, I'm fully immersed in the pros game and people are noticing yesterday. I had to do a book club. I had to blow dry my hair in the middle of the day. That's hard for me to do, but I did it. And people are like, Oh, your hair is it's really great. I was like, it's pros. That's <laughs> constantly. It's not your blow drying. Skills. And then I have to say to people, p r o s e dot com slash sisters. That's right. This is what you do. So, satellite sisters, if you want to up your hair game, go ahead. Liz mentioned that quiz you take. That's free. It's an analysis, and then they, you know, create a shampoo and conditioner just for you. It's so special. It has your name on it, which you know I love because I'm the youngest of eight children, and I like anything. <laughs> with my name on it and not my big sister's name on it. <laughs> All right. So here's what you do if you want great looking hair. Pros is the healthy hair regimen with your name all over it. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash sisters and pros is spelled P-R-O-S-E dot com slash sisters for your free in-depth hair consultation and 15% off. Thanks, pros. Okay, people, it's time for a brand new segment. We used it at the top. Oh, Witness wow. to history. <laughs> yeah. You need some uh, some musical intro for this, Liz. Yeah. It's too expensive to get the music, Julie. We have no music rights anymore. Okay. okay. It's okay, true. Okay, so here we go. Witness to history. This is actually about and by our sister, Monica Dolan, Mm -hmm. who many of you know is a nurse, has been, went to Georgetown Nursing School and has served in various nursing roles throughout her entire career. Well, she's late last night, she sent Leon and I a text that contained the obituary from the New York Times of Dr. Dennis O'Leary. He died and many of you of a certain age may remember that name vaguely because when President Reagan was shot, Dr. Dennis O'Leary was his doctor and was also the doctor who did all of the press briefings and became very famous at the time. So um, so Monica sent this to us and said, R.I.P. Dr. O'Leary. And at the very end of this obit, they talk about how they were, Dr. O'Leary briefed the media that President Reagan was out of the operating room and he would be moved into what he called the VIP suite. And this was at George Washington University Hospital. So Monica, at the time, she was a senior in college. She went to Georgetown Nursing School, but she was working at George Washington University Hospital as a nursing assistant. And as it happened, she was working on the floor three south where this alleged VIP suite was. But because there was really no VIP suite, they had to very quickly create one. So in the text last night, she said, I helped transfer 18 patients on one shift while the president was in recovery. They repainted all the rooms and went around and got all the best furniture and rugs from the university offices to redecorate in 24 hours. One room was for cabinet meetings and joint chiefs. What a unique thing to witness. How about that? She was there. She was was a, a college senior. So I remember her telling us about that at the time and how crazy it was. And then she said, at the end, we got a letter of thanks and a big jar of jelly beans from President Reagan <laughs> and Nancy Reagan's. <laughs> yeah. Right. That was Sweetness she was to history. <laughs> okay. It's pretty amazing. That it is, is amazing. amazing. Yes. It, it yeah, it was amazing at the time and it's amazing now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was an interesting obituary to read about that. I I was in high school. So I have just some, I mean, I, I remember it, but I I don't remember the the briefings. But it was interesting to hear him say like he had never been in front of a camera 
He was yeah. really just the doctor. That was the floor he was in charge of. So that's why he ended up there. And Monica happened to work on that floor. And um, and uh, he said, most of the information I gave uh, the press was true. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, she was there. She was there. Yeah, she was it was there. kind of crazy. But yeah. it certainly was a very scary and confusing time. And uh, there was Monica right in the heart of it. It's amazing. In the thick of it. Witness mm-hmm. to history. Okay. If anyone has any other good witness to history stories, you'd like to share with us you can post those in the facebook group it's always oh, a- liz opening it up i like yeah, it I yeah like, do it not? it's sort yeah. of the forrest gump quality of you were really there for something so okay thank you monica for uh sharing that with us and um and saying it was okay to share it on the show okay now i'm going into a little bit of a bitter business bureau <laughs> i have two <laughs> business notes both of them related to entertainment products but it just, again, it just, sometimes you're just bitter about what's really going on behind the scenes. So the first one is about, there's a brand new book out called Unscripted, uh, which is about what has really been going on behind the scenes with the Redstone family and the, and they control uh, Viacom and CBS, those two companies. So you don't need to care about any of that, about the, the business side of that. Okay. But okay. <laughs> just remember, there were a lot of headlines. Sumner Redstone was in his 90s. And he just like, so, but what really caught my attention about this book that just comes out today, uh, first of all, it's written by um, Jim Stewart and Rachel Abrams from the New York Times. But Jim Stewart is just a fantastic writer about of business stories. And he wrote one of the first great business books I ever read, which was Den of Thieves, which was the full story about the insider trading scandal in the 80s. So that was your Mike Milken, your Ivan Boski. Mm-hmm. Like oh, oh okay. yeah. I remember that one. Yes. Yeah. That was a yeah. good book. Yeah. Yeah. So Den of Thieves is a great book. So anyway, so now he and Rachel Abrams have uh combined to to write this new book. And this is this is really the real succession. I mean, what goes on behind the scenes in the Redstone family, it's unbelievable. So in the review, in the New York Times book review on Sunday, Adam Davidson from The New Yorker, who is a money reporter, wrote the review. And I just want to share this with you about like why I was so instantly interested in this as a bitter business bureau story. Adam Davidson writes, Redstone is as odious a character as I have encountered in fact or fiction. Iago, Charles Foster Kane, Logan Roy have nothing on him. Wow. He, uh, <laughs> That's quite a statement. <laughs> quite a sentence. Iago. Yes. yes. Iago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Going back to Othello. That's the, okay. <laughs> He said, he elevates and crushes his son and daughter with operatic cruelty. He relishes his Pygmalion-like power to turn a struggling actress into a wealthy TV star and just as quickly destroy her. This is a true story, people. It is a true story. So I have the book. I I instantly pre-ordered the audio book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I was I was super happy this morning to see boom, today is pub date. It loaded right into my uh into my audiobook library. So um and one other detail about well, this. happy Valentine's Day to you, Liz. I mean I mean yeah. that's there's your date for tonight. That audiobook yeah. and uh yeah, the lamb. Well, I mean, now that the Theranos trial has sort of wrapped up and <laughs> yes, Liz, exactly. Liz has some free time uh uh yeah. Yeah, yeah. And to before- really go deep. Yeah. Before SBF trial starts. Like, oh, yeah. correct. Yes. Okay. okay. You can squeeze this in. Good. And, okay. There, but there is a Satellite Sisters twist on this too. So ultimately, you know, the whole story is Sherry Redstone, the daughter, did end up taking over the company. Though there was a moment where he had like, I don't know, I just got to say, he had like a lot of hookers in his life, right? He yeah. was just a, like a 90-year-old man who was still sex obsessed. It was super bad. Anyway, so Sherry, the daughter, ends up taking over. And uh, he, again, this is Adam Davidson said, as he fades into decrepitude, Sherry, <laughs> Sherry becomes the narrative's central figure. We see theatrical, performative misogyny from Sumner and his toadies, all of whom apparently find it inconceivable that a woman could be a serious force worthy of respect. Oh man, there you go. Wow. So that's, you got, 
Uh, I'll report back on my findings once I Yes, I'm please. Thank you, Liz. Liz. Yes. We're, we're, we look forward to a full report. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and remember, this is a company that had less Moonves running in and he, well, whatever. Okay. So <laughs> one other quick bitter business bureau again, where it's like, what is the matter with you people? Uh, so uh, there's a new movie coming out that I just want to warn you about. Um, you know, sometimes you see a movie and you think, why on earth would anyone make that? Mm. Who thought this was a good idea? Well, here's the title of a movie coming out. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. So here's the idea, people. Again, business. It's crazy. Winnie the Pooh, as I think we mentioned on Satellite Sisters last year, has now entered the public domain. So copyright wise, anyone can use the Winnie the Pooh character now. And you can do whatever you want with Winnie the Pooh. And Leon, I know you take this very seriously because Pooh's your man. He, he was. I am the big Pooh fan in the family. I mean, yes. I I had Winnie the Pooh birthdays till I was like 15 years old. <laughs> so speaking of birthdays, okay. maybe yes. that's what I'll have this year, a Winnie the Pooh birthday. But uh, okay. so Liz, what, what Here's are they the doing? Here's the deal. Man? It's an R-rated... <gasps> gore splattered live action horror movie featuring a terrifying pair of psychopaths who commit gruesome murders oh my and, gosh and who are the psychopaths Liam? Uh, not who and piglet oh no. my gosh yeah yeah you julie know. I mean i can't even laugh about this no. i think that's so horrifying no. No. and uh, anyway and who this would is, run that? Don't go to that. We have to start a protest of three right now. I mean, okay. yeah. well, this is why yeah. I was a little bitter about it. It's like, I know you can make Pooh into a villain, but does that mean you should make Pooh into a villain? No. I don't know. I don't think so. But apparently there's a lot of buzz for this. I thought, oh, well, this is bound to fail. Well, no. Okay. Sorry, sisters. The sequel has already been announced. Okay. All right. We've got yeah. to move on. I can't okay. even, that just is so it. disturbing to me. Leave it. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's not right. Okay. But uh, I mean, let's just shift a little. I, I wanted to talk. Uh, it's Tuesday. Talk about trends. And I saw an article this week entitled Modern Parenting Trends That Boomers Don't Understand. Okay. So that got my, you know, my attention, uh, just in a tiny bit of resentment as well, because I am a boomer and, uh, and uh, you know, the idea that I don't have the, the ability to perceive generational differences in parenting styles, I find that slightly offensive, but we're going to... <laughs> We're going to discuss, but nevertheless, we're going to proceed. But I think many of the parenting trends that they're that they're focused on in 2023 are things that we all can get behind. Okay, number one trend: parenting uh, is more about education than intuition. What do you think oh. about that, Liam? You know, I that, don't even know what that means. What does that well, mean? Well, it, mean, it means that modern parents really like to get the facts, you know, oh. uh, but before they make a decision, they like to educate themselves on possibilities for, from anything from their parenting style to, you know, techniques for sleeping or eating. Oh, I got but it. They don't okay. want to just rely on intuition, which apparently they attribute uh, boomer parents that that's what we did, which is not correct. Okay. But what do you, <laughs> I was going to say, is that what you two did? No, no, but I mean, I think intuition, I, but I would say that I think they go hand in hand, uh, education and intuition. I mean, and I always say that, you know, to young mothers, you know, trust your intuition, trust your judgment. Mm -hmm. You're with these, this is your child, right? right. But uh, don't you think that's that? I think that's, uh, well, this is the generation, you know, that won't get like get a cup of coffee without yelping at first. So they're just <laughs> yelping their parenting choices. They want I, I do, I do think education I, is important. I, and it so opens you up, especially if you've had, if you didn't have, you felt like you didn't have great parenting, but yeah, I do think it is your baby. You, you can, you can make the decisions on your okay. own. So Trust your I intuition. Think but okay. Sustainability. I think parents, this is a modern trend. Mm -hmm. The parents are really engaged in making sure that everything that they do for their child is always through the lens of, you know, sustainability and using resources here on earth. And, and, you know, we're all good with that. And I don't think that that has to be a generational difference at all. No, do you think, Liz. No, 
No, I mean, again, if you had had the tools to do that when you were both mothers, like you obviously would have tried to make the healthiest, best choices for your children. And parents now just have more information about some of those things. I think some of that is just like, they just don't want big giant plastic toys. So if that's what they don't want to do, don't give them big giant plastic toys. (laughs) Right. Grandparents. (laughs) Just no matter how cute they are. No matter how cute they are. Yeah. Or how much they want that big wheel. Just don't do it. Don't get it. Don't do it. They don't don't want that. (laughs) Okay. Here's something that we didn't have, but is super popular now. Gender reveal parties. Okay. Hmm. Leon, um, do you think this is oversharing um, or because this is certainly a, you know, a generational thing where they don't really find any joy in, in, in the unknown? I mean, so <laughs> letting, <laughs> letting things be known is part of it. That's probably true. Yeah, I didn't know the sex of my children. So this is a I, I chose not to. So uh, it was like the only fun thing about pregnancy for me was. At least I was going to get a surprise at the end. It was the, it was the only fun thing? <laughs> Pretty Aww. much. Yeah. Aww. So yeah. She, she mean, was not having a Rihanna um, pregnancy <laughs> no. at all. So, uh, yeah. So that um, I would, uh, I, they can, I mean, people want a party, a party. Just don't light the forest on fire with your gender. Yeah, I, I think, party. and I would say stay away from balloons uh, yeah. this week. That, though, they don't. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. <laughs> that That's seems true. like a bad thing. And here's a here's a trend that I think, you know, is is of this generation that is being extra as parents, whether it's the elf on the shelf or, or the tooth fairy or uh, or birthday parties that are over the top or love baskets on Valentine's Day rather than a simple Valentine's card or mm. gift. And, you know, if you want to be extra with your children, mm-hmm. I mean, be extra. Be right? extra. Yeah. Sure. Who, I, who I, better I, to I, be extra with? Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As you know, it can very quickly tip into competitive extra though. So that's, I think, oh. you know, mm. we all went to those. I think that's not new parents. No, like, no. you know, it starts with a simple, you know, Valentine snack for the kids at school. And then the next thing, you know, it is like, you know, making, making Sundays or something outside. <laughs> it just, it can just spiral. Like the snacks at a soccer practice started with cut oranges and then uh-huh. became giant snack bags every time they ran 12, 12 feet. So <laughs> I, I just, that's be extra with your family, but just, it doesn't need to be competitive. Do whatever you want to do. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's what I would say. And yeah. I would say one more trend for parent that I would advise parents now is embrace the boomers in your, you know, in your lives. Okay. We're, we're pretty good. We're, we're not all bad. We're open to all kinds of things. Just give us a shot. Give us a chance. <laughs> all right. This follows beautifully because this is from uh, the cut New York magazine. They posted about two weeks ago, about a hunt, 200 rules or something new rules of etiquette, uh, everything from relationships to workplace to um, how to host, ghost, exist in polite society today. So it covers a wide range of things. And I'm not going to read all of them, but we, you know, the link to this fun article will be in the show notes. We will put it in pep talk. We will put it on the blog post and I'll put it in the Facebook group. So uh, it's just a fun thing to look at and talk about uh, with the people in your lives. But Liz and Julie, I picked out five of the hundreds that I thought would be fun for us to talk about. Okay. So, uh, um, and just get your gut check. So this is what the folks at New York Magazine and The Cut think. And then I'm going to ask you. So rule number two is you may callously cancel almost any plans up to 2 p.m. At 2 p.m., there's still ample time for your friend if they choose to text around and find another dinner companion. By three, they will almost certainly be alone for the night. So if you want to cancel, you have till 2 p.m., then you have to go. What do you think? (laughs) Mm. Well, I found this rule useful. I'm so against this. I can't I can't even speak. Okay. (laughs) Oh, no, I'm for this. But I okay, 2 p.m. probably is the right deadline, because in my mind, maybe this is sort of a pandemic related thing. I felt like you can really cancel any time up until you think that person might be leaving home to go to the thing <laughs> you're supposed to meet them at, right? <laughs> like, but once they're in their car, no canceling. So that would be, it could be more like 4 p.m., 5 p.m. If, you know, even in LA traffic, maybe 3 p.m. Uh, 
So, but I think they're right to set a earlier deadline than I was enforcing on my own. Obviously, Julie, you disagree. I disagree. I mean, okay, if you have COVID, you can cancel. Okay. Uh-huh. But uh Thank but you. if you make plans, you should really hell or high water, you should show up. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's the way I feel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm 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 leaning towards you, Julie, but I do understand that sometimes people this is callously canceled though. So that means like you just don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're too and, lazy to get off. Right. And that becomes, okay. again, that becomes a, a pattern. So I worry more about the person canceling than the person canceled on like every once in a while you should go out to dinner. It's nice. Yeah. Um, okay. Rule number nine. I love this one. If someone starts telling you a story you've heard before, you have two seconds to tell them. All right. Here's the justification. I'm all for this one. All right. Interject with, oh my gosh. Yeah. That was hilarious or truly horrific. You've told me that before, but if you don't say it within the allotted time, you just have to listen to them tell the story again. (laughs) And if you're in a larger group, you have to listen again, period. So Mm -hmm. what Mm -hmm. do you think? Repeating two seconds. That seems pretty quick. You got to be on it. It's pretty quick pretty yeah. quick and because but i agree that if you don't jump in relatively quickly then not only do you have to listen but you have to pretend you've never heard the story yes, yes. <laughs> you, have to, you have to totally play along i mean the reason you're jumping in is not because of you it's to save the person who's telling the story the embarrassment of having told the story twice right, <laughs> right. i mean unless it's a kind gesture uh, yeah. That's centered on the other person. I, I say I'm with Liz. You just have to sit there and listen to it. Never in a group. Uh, you know, you can you can't uh, say I've already heard this. You know, yeah. you have to you have to be warm and accepting because we're all going to tell stories uh, to people over and over again. <laughs> yes, it's going to happen. We so, are in that time in our yes. <laughs> I mean, so I, I don't I don't really think we should uh, be quite so judgy on this topic. Yes, yes not. But just. I Thank also you. think having a rule where you're allowed to say, oh yeah. Yeah, you told me that. That's hilarious. To save everyone, if it's just two people, you don't need to have the person tell the long version of the story again. So I do believe in that. And sometimes that's hard to do quickly. And uh, so to like two two seconds, seconds. you got to jump in as 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 our producer Courtney used to say, cut them off, jump in, cut them off. (laughs) Uh, She was teaching us how to do talk radio. Just cut them off. Uh, Okay, Uh, here we go. This one, this has the Dolan's written all over it. Number 51. This is about going out and staying in. No deciding your order at the counter. When you roll up, speak up. If you are waiting in line behind more than one person, That is your time to figure this out. So get off your phone. It's not for texting or getting deranged health tips from TikTok or reading work (laughs) slack. You just got to come ready to play and cut right to the chase. Just a string of nouns. Poppy Z bagel, cream cheese, not toasted. (laughs) Okay, done. Yes, 100% believe this. Cannot stand it when people are doing nothing in the line. They're not using the line correctly at all. (laughs) And then we have to just, it's torture to live with them. It's it's basic consideration. I mean, it's something that Dr. Forney, I think, uh, uh, you know, (laughs) when he wrote his books on civility would say, it's really thinking about the other person, about paying attention to where you are and being considerate. Like it's not helpful to the person behind you if you're just stalling there and reading the menu for the first time when you get to the front of the line. Yeah. Is, totally. right. And I enjoy places, take out joints where they have a sign. We will not serve you if you are on your phone. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think that is, that is worth enforcing that rule. Yes. As, as long as we were talking about parenting earlier as a non-parent, <laughs> I'm going to chime in and say the worst infraction is when not only do they get up to the front of the line and not have an order ready, but then when they hand a child a menu and say, Jimmy, what do you want? <laughs> like, no, no, that is not how this is conducted. <laughs> Children choosing, <laughs> reading the menu. No, no. <laughs> let's do a little. Let's do a little parenting in that situation. <laughs> okay. All right. I knew this would be fun. All right. <laughs> Rule number fifty-four: Don't browbeat in. Don't browbeat anyone into joining a game at a party. If you're the only person who doesn't want to play the game, offer to be the scorekeeper. 
That's fine. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I couldn't agree with this more. First of all, don't browbeat anyone into anything. I, 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 aren't we too old for that? I, I don't want to, if you don't want to eat the cake, don't make me eat the cake. If I don't want to play the game, I, I don't want to play the game. Like if yeah. I wanted to play it, I would say yes. I don't, <laughs> why do people do that? Oh, come on. Like, and you see grownups like forcing other grownups to drink. Like, what is that? Just stop yeah. browbeating people. I think we should agree. I think we should browbeat browbeat people into dancing though. I think that's okay. the exception. <laughs> okay. I think everybody should dance no matter what. Okay. I right, okay, I would fine. be willing to consider that alteration. In the world. <laughs> okay. You know, I think it's, yeah, it's the definition of party means there's no browbeating at all. You know, because <laughs> right. that's, that's what a party is about. Just everyone. Uh, but Liz, I say, if there's a conga line, you better get in that conga line. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I think that's true. I, yeah, because you you look like a loser if you don't. You know? So, right. just, but but yeah, if you don't want to play Pictionary, don't play Pictionary. You can yeah. still enjoy the game without playing. You can still just be a fly on the wall. I mean, you don't have to take everyone down. So, mm-hmm. all right, this this goes along with it. So obviously, you know where my head was at. Rule one hundred and one. Uh, this was for the workplace, but I think it's available. It's true anywhere. Don't comment on other people's food. You don't know their trauma. I get very oh, amped right. up in workplaces, and sometimes that takes the form of overly aggressive conviviality. This is the writer <laughs> saying this. So I like to discuss what people are putting on their plates. Well, of course, one time they made a mistake, and they said we had an emotional heart-to-heart about that person's long journey with disordered eating and what and why what I did was not okay. And now I never talk about people's food anymore. So I, I agree with that. I don't comment. If you don't want to eat this, don't eat it. If you don't eat that, fine. You mm-hmm. just want to eat that. I, I don't care what other people eat and I don't want other people to care what I eat. <laughs> I just, I, so that's what I would say. I a hundred percent agree with this. People should just eat what they want to eat and drink what yes. they want to do without my yeah. comment. doesn't right. matter. I agree yeah, with that. Because it's much more personal than you think. So yes. don't get into it. The yeah. only, the only <laughs> allowance I would make is like if a waiter delivers a plate full of food to the table next to you. And that looks good to you and you want to know what it is, you can ask what they ordered. Oh, okay. Yes. That's yes. Okay, right? Yeah. Yeah. But that's not right. commenting on their food. That that's like, well, that looks delicious. What is that? Totally allowed. Yes. 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 I think for me, because I had this colon cancer surgery, there's a, just a weird list of food I can't eat. And it's just so tedious to talk about. And I just don't, I don't want to talk no. about it. I just no. <laughs> Right, I don't, right. I'm just going to eat what I want to eat. I, it may be weird. Maybe it's just the sauteed spinach, but you know what? I can eat sauteed spinach and I love it. So if I order two, two th- common, two helpings of sauteed spinach for lunch and nothing else, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm eating. Okay. <laughs> okay. So hey. there are many, many more rules like this. You could probably just host a party and talk about these rules, but just don't <laughs> browbeat anyone into, browbeat. <laughs> into doing it for sure. Great list, Leon. Julie, you have some breaking Rothy's news. I mean, you have some exciting, personal, on the scene Rothy's uses that you want to tell us about. You, you were recently. Yes, I do. I have a, I, what I want to. I want to testify today, Leon. I want to testify. Okay. You know, I have my cheetah print loafers, Rothy's loafers. Yes. I love them. I took them on my hiking trip to Chile. Mm -hmm. Now I'm hiking all day in my hiking boots. I cannot tell you how comfortable the Rothy's cheetah print loafers were to put on in the evening. And everyone noticed my snappy shoes. Mm -hmm. But Leon, because I was on a trip and, you know, packing, they're so good. Rothy's are so good when you're traveling because they're multifunctional. I remembered that they were made of water bottles, right, Leon? (laughs) So at one point in the hiking trip, I needed water shoes. I didn't bring water shoes, but I had my Rothy's cheetah loafers. So I just put my Rothy's cheetah loafers on and I walked right into Lake Villarica with them on. Perfect. I think that is so funny. I did that. I did that. People were like, oh my gosh, I wish I had a pair of Rothy's because they thought it was the just the smartest thing they'd ever seen. Yeah. And then, and then you could walk out and they're clean and they're quick dry. So you were yes, probably ready. To so they are. So wherever you, wherever you go, you need a water shoe. You need an evening shoe. 
You've got that in your Rothy's. Yes. Okay. We, we love our Rothy's shoes. We love our Rothy's bags. They have beautiful colors, great prints over there for spring. If you just want to just enjoy the internet for five minutes, head over to rothys.com slash sisters for stylish and comfortable shoes. Get shop Rothy's. Get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash sisters. That's a great deal from Rothy's. $20 off your first purchase at Rothy's. Rothys.com slash sisters. And you know, Rothys is R O T H Y S.com slash sisters. Thanks, Rothys. It's us. We're back, Liz, Leanne, and Julie. Thanks for staying with us. We have entertaining sisters coming up. But first, I want to remind people that we do have a private Facebook group. We have many ways to reach the Satellite Sisters. We have a website. We have an Instagram account, at Sat Sisters. We are on Twitter occasionally still. Uh, but we have a private Facebook group that you can join. The group is really for listeners of the podcast. Uh, it just sort of sets the tone for the group. It, it means that people sort of understand the the rules written and otherwise. So as such, we ask questions like entry questions. You, You can go to Facebook, you can search Facebook for the Satellite Sisters group, and then you have to answer these three questions. And then Liz and I vet the people. And it's it's uh, it's fun to actually see people's answers. And this week we got some classic answers that I wanted to share with you. Okay. So these are not trick questions. It's, do you listen to the podcast? How do you listen to the podcast? And if you're not a podcast listener, how did you hear about Satellite Sisters? So we're trying to figure out, you know, where you came from. How did you get here? It helps us sort of figure things out. Yes. So, okay. We're we had to make sure uh, you're not a bot, like you are an actual human. Yes. Okay. So this week, Lynn said, yes, uh, she listens to the podcast and she knows how to spell satellite correctly. Excellent. <laughs> she listens on Apple podcast. And then how did you hear about us? She said, I've been listening since COVID lockdown. Mindfulness podcasts were recommended, but did nothing to help me get my mind off the stressful world unpleasantness. <laughs> I was so happy to find Satellite Sisters. Oh, well, that is excellent. That's, that's, that's a good response. Good okay. answer. And then here's another funny one. Uh, okay, let me see. I have I took screenshots on my phone. So, okay, uh, let's see. It's funny because the questions are really designed really just to to eliminate people that, you know, we're not really want to right. sell sunglasses. Right. Wanna, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We, okay. We really expect too a divulging of too much personal information, but we do enjoy it. It's funny. Okay. So this one, I managed to cut off the name because I was just grabbing a screenshot. So I apologize. Uh, but she listens to the podcast. She listens on Apple. And how did you hear about satellite sisters? Okay. She is friends with Irish immigrant parents who recommended it. Okay, check. I and then and then she added, and I'm going to Patagonia with my siblings. <laughs> okay, so, it's unbelievable. It's like the podcast was made for her. Irish immigrant <laughs> parents going to Patagonia, and she's turning sixty, so that's her birthday present to herself going to Patagonia. So we're happy wow. to have these people uh, yeah. in the Satellite Sisterhood. <laughs> Fantastic, fun. I like the ones too when it's like, where do you listen to Satellite Sisters? And people just say. I don't know that purple thing on my phone. That is <laughs> a sign that they're in the right place. <laughs> or, or they say like in my car, which is not really what you meant with the question, but it's always interesting to know. Like right. it's an about- it's an open-ended question. I, I think you have to give them a passing grade on that. Yeah. 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 <sighs> oh my God. So funny. Okay. Well, let's move on to entertaining sisters. Uh, I wanted to start with a reminder that. The Oscars are only a month away now. March 12th uh, is the 95th uh, Academy Awards. So just think about which movies you want to make sure you see before the actual awards. I'm going to recommend Mm -hmm. something that was nominated in the Best International Film Feature category this week because I really enjoyed this movie. It is Argentina 1985. And this is the story of the team of lawyers that took on the heads. Uh, Argentina had a like bloody military dictatorship during the 1980s. And uh, that's when 30,000 people were disappeared. It was just a terrible time in Argentina history. But then there was an attempt to bring the military junta to justice. And this is about the lawyers that did that. 
And but it's really interesting because very few like grown up adult lawyers would work on this because they just thought they would be murdered and they were all threatened with murder. So it's like all these young people fresh out of law school or still in law school that end up working for the head lawyer. Hmm. And it it really makes you think a lot about even like things happening now in the world where the people that step up and, and fight the power, they're putting their lives at risk in Iran or in yes. Russia. It just, it really made me think a lot about that. But it also made me think, Julie, about when we were in Argentina, speaking right. of Patagonia. On our trip to Patagonia, we went <laughs> yes. to Buenos Aires, yes, yes, and we took a tour. Yeah, and as part of our tour, we went to the Plaza de Mayo, and every Thursday, the mothers and the grandmothers of the Plaza de Mayo meet there, and these are mothers and grandmothers that are still trying to find out what happened to their children and grandchildren. Oh, I mean, so can sad. you imagine, can you imagine that you're, you know, that your son, your grandson, you know, or, you know, a nephew was, was just taken and you have, and, and never, you never got never any know. information about what happened to that person. Right. What and a you'll terrible see, hole yeah. it would be. You'll see yes. in the movie that these women, they wear white scarves and they hold signs, um, with uh, the names of the disappeared, and you still see that in uh, in Buenos Aires. But anyway, this is not about everything that happened to those people. It's a real courtroom drama. Oh, so, okay. I didn't yeah. understand that yeah, when yeah, I yeah. saw what the movie so, was about. Oh, I'd be interested. Not provide in that. a lot of the background. It's good to know a little bit, but you don't need to know a little bit. It's just a very exciting courtroom drama with lots of interesting characters in it. So that is my recommendation for this week, Argentina 1985. It's on uh, Amazon Prime Video. Oh, good. Well, Liz has Oscar-nominated films to recommend. I have a different category. It's, some, it's a new feature I'm bringing to Satellite Sisters. I'm calling it B-minus movies that have A-plus endings. How about that? <laughs> oh, over the weekend, okay, I saw some B-minus movies, but both of these movies that I'm going to recommend had excellent endings and one of the one of the reasons that these movies are are worth watching is cuz they both involve dancing to dance and this is a pretty predictable story about two singletons in LA and they go through a series of bad dates and miss opportunities and it's a B minus movie and it has sort of B minus stars in it. One, the star is Tom Malloy. You may know him from the indie cult favorite movie, Gravesend. Have you heard of that movie? No, no. I haven't heard. <laughs> but that's sort of what the caliber. But but all I say, you know, is ask me to dance. Just hang on because the last scene in the movie is worth it. This movie can be seen on Hoopla. I have never heard of that as a streaming service, but if you can find it, ask me to dance is there. Also, if you're on American Airlines this month, it's there too. Is that where you saw it? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> the second movie I'm going to recommend is on Netflix. So you probably have a better shot with this. And I thought it was charm charming. It's called Rumba Therapy. It's in French with English subtitles. And uh, this is certainly more charming of the two. Uh, but you do have to put up, I'm giving it a B minus grade uh, at the beginning of the movie because you have to put up with a lot of gratuitous French jokes about sex and body parts. Okay. But this is... <laughs> The story of a school bus driver who has a midlife crisis. And as part of that crisis, after the crisis, he decides that he wants to try to reunite with his daughter, who, whom he abandoned at a very young age. So, but his daughter is a dancing instructor. So oh. he starts taking dancing lessons. And then and that's the story proceeds from there. And that's called Rumba Therapy. It's on Netflix. And again, it's kind of B minus, but hang in there because it has a lovely <laughs> ending. <laughs> Ooh, it's a whole new category of yes. entertaining. So we've got witness to history and B minus movies with A plus endings. We're just 
just segmenting away this show. All right. Well, I wanted to recommend a twofer. Um, it's both a book and a TV show. So, you know, I get a lot of books in advance. Most of the books I read, I read in advance because I have access to something called NetGalley or I get copies because we do so many book lists for Satellite Sisters. And so publishers will send me the books in advance. So sometimes I forget to read books that are just sitting on my nightside table, you know, that I actually buy in the bookstore. I'm just so focused on reading in advance. But this week I picked up a book called Dear Edward that I, I've had for three years on my bedside table. I remember distinctly getting it. It was February 2020, right before the pandemic. And the book is about um, the sole survivor of a plane crash. So it's about a 12-year-old boy who was the sole survivor of the plane crash. And I think once the pandemic started, I just thought like, I don't really need this book. It's not going to be uplifting, but it's a new TV show. And I really wanted to see the TV show. So I read the book first. Okay. The book is amazing. It's by Ann Napolitano. It is a beautiful book about love and grief and loss and people's stories and lives. It does center around a 12-year-old boy that loses his whole family in a plane crash, but he survives and he goes to live with his aunt and uncle. But you also, throughout the brilliantly written and structured book, you get to know all the other people on the plane as well. And their stories end up aiding his recovery. Mm. So it's just really well done and beautiful and was a a top, you know, a top book uh, when it came out, but I'm just getting to it. So I wanted to tip people off. So then I went to watch the TV show, which is written by Jason Kadams. Now, I love his work. He was a writer on Friday Night Lights. And on Parenthood, Friday Night Lights is probably my favorite drama of all time. So, and it stars Connie Britton from Friday Night Lights. I thought I'm in on this, but I want to read the book first. So I can tell you've watched the first two episodes of the TV show. Equally as sad and sob filled as the book. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Now they have done different things with the TV show and I totally trust Jason Kadem. So I am with him. You have the main character still, the 12 year old boy and his family, but in the TV show, they changed all the people on the plane. Oh, oh, kind of interesting. So first I was like, I don't remember that character. I don't remember that character. And then I realized what was happening. So it's, if even if you read the book, this is sort of a new story because they've changed the people on the plane, but it's well done. So uh, I would say this, this is, both are sob fests. Both are sad. If you don't like to fly, do not read the book or watch okay. or watch the movie. Okay. Uh, you know, but it's a particularly tender look at sibling loss because oh. it's so that's in the book. The twelve-year-old boy loses his fifteen-year-old brother and his parents, but it's the brother that he's just. He was like, that's the one I was supposed to go grow old with, and his aunt loses her sister. So. That's that's where the the really like powerful stuff about mm-hmm. loss comes in. So mm-hmm. dear Edward, uh, you know, beautiful book, beautiful TV show. The TV show is on Apple Plus. And okay. you know what? I haven't seen a bad thing over there on Apple Plus. I mean, they keep turning out some great you stuff. You know what? I agree with you, Leanne. They yeah. don't do a lot. It's not right. a volume play. What but what they do have, I've liked everything over there. Yeah. I, I really, yeah. That's, a, that's I, a good direction to go if you don't yeah, know what, what right. to if, watch. If you're looking yeah. which streaming service, I mean, I don't know. I think it's very, very good, high quality writing and acting and directing over there. So dear Edward. Okay. Uh, you know what I'm just finishing, Leon? I'm about three quarters of the way through the audio book of Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which you oh. recommended. If you, I am loving that. Okay, so good. Yeah, so great. Julie, have you read that? No, I haven't. It's on my list. I know Leon recommended it and several uh, listeners in our Facebook group have said they've read it and liked it. So I'm really great. And about yeah. such an unusual subject matter, sort of inside the world of video games. I was mm-hmm. like, am I really going to care about this? But it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Then on a much lighter note from the sob fest of Dear Edward, I just like, what could be better than the fact that yesterday... Tina Fey and Amy Poehler announced that they are going on a comedy tour together. Oh, I can't wait. That is great. That's a hot ticket. That's a hot ticket. Yep. Should be a national holiday for uh, the Satellite (laughs) Sisterhood. And they're calling it, I love this, they're calling it the Restless Leg Tour. So you know what you're in for. Funny. Very funny. They said they are going to celebrate 
30 years of friendship with an evening of jokes, iconic stories, and conversational entertainment. Oh, oh. that is a hot ticket. I want to go to that. You cannot yeah. go wrong. And then, then they said in the press release, this made me laugh because yesterday we were having a meeting about something we're planning. And they said, if this tour goes right, we can finally end this friendship. And <laughs> <laughs> there, there is something about traveling together. So, so, so far, they've only announced four dates, D.C., Chicago, Boston, and Atlantic City. I'm pretty sure there's going to be more than that, though. And the first one is April 28th in D.C. Anyway, Restless Leg, this is like, you cannot go wrong with this. Right. Just, yeah. Just, just, just get on board with the Restless Leg Tour, people. <laughs> get on board. The only, there's, there's only one problem. Ticket master. Oh, <laughs> all right. Anyway, but anyway, get on board anyway. All right. That's our show for today. A big thanks to Sergio Enriquez. Thank you, Sergio, our engineer. And thanks to Emily Loudermill, who does the show graphics that you can see in Pep Talk and at Sat Sisters. Thanks to all of you who support our sponsors. It's super duper important. It allows us to do the show for real. So we want to thank you if you've been supporting them for years. If you're just trying some of our sponsors for the first time, use those URLs and those codes. It makes a huge difference. Uh, Our to-do list for the week. Jewel, what do you got? Okay, well, remember how yesterday in the production meeting, I told you I was so excited because I was going to this Valentine's Day party? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, it was yesterday, and I thought it was today. Oh, my gosh. I, I was know. wondering when you said that. I was like, isn't Valentine? Oh, you missed I, it. You missed yes, it. I had to put it in my calendar on the wrong day. So, <gasps> oh, I just, I am, I am so, first of all, embarrassed and ashamed. <laughs> And then I'm just so disappointed because I wanted to go to my first Galentine's party. I had a little outfit all planned. Oh, Oh, Jewel. Oh, so that's that. How did you figure out that you got the wrong date? Because there was um, a lovely uh, group email afterwards uh, where everyone was thanking our wonderful host for a wonderful Galentine's (sighs) Day party. Yeah. You know, it's funny when you said that yesterday, yeah. I thought, well, that's surprising. They would have a Valentine's Day party on Valentine's Day. Yeah. And I but- don't know how it happened. I just like, I, oh. so. Okay. All right. That's okay. Sorry. Sorry. And you were excited. I mean, you were I know psyched. I was excited. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Jewel, I know this is going to be a surprise to you, but my husband and I for Valentine's Day, guess what we're doing? We're going golfing. We're going to do nine holes later. That's all I'm saying. Nine wow. holes. Wow. So there you go. That's our little, that's, we've never done that on Valentine's day. We've really never done anything on Valentine's day. I'll be perfectly <laughs> okay. honest. So the fact that as he was leaving today, he said, what are you doing today? You want to just go play golf at like four, you know, see if we can get in nine holes. I was like, I'll take it. If you had said, you know, <laughs> do, you, do, you, yeah, do you want to go clean up the public park? I would have said, sure. That sounds good. So yeah. <laughs> Dolphin. Wow. Well, yeah. I love it. Lynn. Okay. Very enjoy. Nice. You two crazy kids, <laughs> crazy kids going golfing for Valentine's day. Well, I am uh, happy to uh, remind everyone that tomorrow Uh, The 15th is the start of LA Art Week. There's one week a year where there are all kinds of like big art shows, little art shows, opening exhibits all over town in all kinds of facilities. Starts tomorrow. Um, I've really been staying away from like big convention centers full of art because of, you know, lefty is that's a, it's a hard, it's hard on my leg, but I picked out an art opening tomorrow night, the Hammer Museum. It's a nice little museum, not far from me. And it's an opening of the drawings of Bridget Riley, who's a um, contemporary painter, but this, these are like her drawings and things. Anyway, I'm getting into the swing of LA Artworks, Art Week sisters. All right, so, good. Good, Liz. Uh, okay. You know, and then this weekend, I've been watching them for a month right next to the dog park where I walk walk hooper there's that's santa monica airport and they've been putting in this huge installation inside a hangar and also outside that is also part of la art week so it might be that from the dog park we can just take in some art over the weekend so i may be doing that too so <laughs> LA, la art week doing the best i can that's okay <laughs> All right. Remember, I'll be at that bookstore in Santa Monica on Sunday, my birthday. Oh, we'll, my God. We'll that's chat. Right. Yeah, we'll yeah, chat. We'll, we'll make a plan. You. If you Happy birthday to you. Oh, thanks. Yes, yeah. Yes. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, thank you. 
I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> Do you want to remind people what the name of the bookstore is, Leanne, in case any listeners want to turn up? Sure. It's called Zibby's Bookshop, and I'll be there Sunday, February 19th at 11 a.m. It's a new bookstore on Montana Avenue, and um, there will be 40 authors throughout the weekend. So e- even if you can't come Sunday, there's a million authors showing up, signing books, and celebrating um, this new bookstore in Santa Monica. So Liz, we'll, we'll touch base. We'll figure out, we'll figure out a meetup. Yep. If you're not busy with the art world. All right, uh, sisters, have a great week. You too. You too, Leanne. Happy birthday. And thank you. And don't forget, call your satellite sister.